Dennis Weiss, Eagle Communications, welcome to our town. Special treat for you today. We have an update from Rolling Hill Zoo. Have my buddy Bob Jenkins, the executive director out here. And we're gonna take a 20 year tour, you're telling me. 20th anniversary, Bob. Yep, we're gonna do about 20 years and what, 20, 30 minutes? That's Something like good, that, that okay. sounds good. Have you? Because that's how old the zoo will be this coming October wow. on the 27th. It's that been means, here for 20 years. That means I've been in Kansas a while because I had just came when Charlie mm -hmm. brought this thing out of the dust of the earth. Yep. So we're off 20 years, and a lot of this is about Charlie, the individual who really created this zoo. So we part of the exhibit is about him, his background, where he came from. He started Blue Beacon, the big truck washing company. He also started uh, PowerVac, uh, which is a big company that yes. uh, does stuff uh, all over for us as well. And uh, just a phenomenal individual, and it, largely because of his philosophy. If you can't do it right, don't do it. You know, <laughs> Charlie very did a lot of things simple. right. He did. He did. Uh, and more importantly, he also knew that, well, this is not going to work. Let's back up and do it right. Uh, okay. What have you. And that's, that's how the zoo has evolved over that time. So I made, I made a mistake. I didn't really tell people in what portion of Rolling Hill Zoo I'm standing. We're at the back of the museum in mm -hmm. a gallery that's named? Earl Bain Gallery. Yes. And what have you. And you come back here and you can see the entire history of the zoo. There's a timeline that'll walk you through everything. There's photographs, whatever, mm -hmm. that basically demonstrate how this place went from a prairie to a park to a zoo. And then World it, class. Where's it going to go after that? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I have a lot of warm memories of Charlie Walker as a mm -hmm. businessman. Not because I knew him personally. I shook his hand a few times and mm -hmm. walked a few of the same streets. But the reality of it is, is my admiration comes from what Charlie did mm -hmm. inside our co community. And indeed, this blessing is a result of the wider thought process of Charlie Walker and community. Absolutely, absolutely. And what's amazing, I, coming from the zoo profession, okay. you know, nearly 50 years doing it, people come here and they go, what the, <laughs> is this place doing here? In you the know, middle of the prairie. In the middle of the prairie. They are absolutely amazed mm -hmm. that, at the zoo that was created here for Salina, for Saline County, and all of Kansas. So just to tell this 20 year story as we're doing a short bit here on tape today, really as I, my eyes look around, this is a world class exhibit of the 20 year story. This is not Polaroids nailed to the wall here, Bob. No, this no, is there's really, a little really Velcro. Really is there's there a little, little Velcro? Well, Velcro. But yeah. the, the key to this exhibit is it followed with Charlie's dictum. And that is basically, it was conceived in-house, designed in-house, and constructed entirely, with the exclusion of printing the panels, okay. entirely constructed wow. in-house by well, staff. Well done, Rolling Hills Zoo. Yep. Okay, so we have young Charlie up on the young board Young Charlie here. up here. And if you can see, there's just a little bit of an imp <laughs> in there, a little bit of an imp. But Sit still, also, Charlie, we're taking your picture. But there's also, <laughs> also a good brain yeah that's the key mm -hmm. down here and then through his years he was in the Air Force phenomenal businessman uh, what have you but he was also uh, into phil philanthropy what have you he there's so many stories about Charlie here about his generosity you know there's the one he was driving to work saw some kids standing on the corner said why aren't you guys in school well we can't get to school why can't you get to school because we don't have a school bus mm -hmm. that school has a school bus the next right. day you know, I mean, he did things like that. Uh, people that needed cars on staff. Very generous. Man. I love the 1950s version of Charlie Walker. Has to be 1950s or into the 60s, rolled up sleeves there. Well, yeah, and a little bit of James Dean, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, I know. like that. Very yeah, cool. He was very, very good. Very good guy. And okay. that's my only regret. I never got to meet him. You didn't? No, I never got to meet the man. Well, you already know this, but you would have been welcomed. Mm -hmm. You would have been honored and appreciated mm -hmm. by Charlie Walker for the work you're doing today. Well, me and the rest of the staff. Exactly. If anybody stands tall here, they're standing on other people's shoulders. Agreed. Okay, Bob, what's okay. next? We got to start. Well, I think we got to go over there and we got to look at Prairie to Park. Okay. How we started. Moving through the 20 year history of Rolling Hill Zoo, and the picture I am looking at is the old Tesco Depot being moved to Rolling Hills. Yep. The big start. 
One of the big starts. I mean, this facility actually started as a huge barn where Charlie raised Belgian draft horses. Okay. And then he made the one mistake that we in the profession always <laughs> seem to make. He went out and got a llama. A llama. And a llama led to a giraffe. Yeah. And a giraffe led to a lion. And all this other stuff like that. Wow. And then he met up with a guy by the name of Bob Brown, who he hired to help take care of his exotic animals. And then Bob, somehow Bob convinced him, you know, you really need to put these out on display for people to see. People were coming down to the barn to look at them. Sure. But you could get more people out here. And before you know it, Charlie had agreed to build a zoo. So I saw the Old Depot on the wall, and mm -hmm. my thoughts go bing, bing, bing. A lot of great things happen with Old Depots in mm -hmm. Kansas. Can uh, Abilene into the Chisholm Trail. Uh, the reason they went to Abilene is because that's where the railroad was, and right. railroads have what? Depots. Depots. And depots are scattered all over rural Kansas. Mm -hmm. And the people that find a way of repurposing them with greatness do things like Charlie Walker did. Right. I'm he happy brought that about depot that. down here, planted it down, and now serves as one of our main entrances, a gift shop as well as storage and a well, I won't tell you about the money room. But anyway. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Very good. So I, I remember I never saw Charlie and the draft horses, but that's the first thing I heard about Charlie mm -hmm. was Charlie and his draft horses at the Salina Charity Show. Mm -hmm. They would put on Ex uh, exhibitions, and he was one of the ones that was always in attendance there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, there was probably, as we saw in those earlier pictures, a little bit of a showman in him. Yeah, well, that's know, good. No question. Absolutely. Yeah. But if we move further down, okay. you see the actual construction of the zoo. And again, you'll see the chimp house being built, you'll see the giraffe barn under construction, and you'll begin to see some of the animals that started to come in. So here's what I saw on my little walk out there, Dave. I saw a 1996 Olympic tug that's now your <laughs> tram. There has to be a story there, Bob. Oh, there is. Bob Brown was watching the 1996 Olympics. And there was a discussion going on in house here. How are we going to get the people around that need a ride, do tours, and all this other stuff like that? And Bob saw these trams being used for the Olympics. What are they going to do with them afterwards? <laughs> so all those trams are here now That's as a cool. result. Uh, they don't have quite the same tugs. They have a different tug to make sure that we can get around. But it's the trams that were in the Very 1996 cool. Olympics. Very cool. But it was thinking like yes. that. Thinking. That thinking made this place possible. Thinking drives feet. That's it. Feet drive action. Action drives results. There you go. Okay. Where are you taking me? Next, we'll go down here. Bob, you've moved me to more animals moving in, some of right. the fan favorites. Oh, yeah. These are some of the ones that, over the years, people came to enjoy, to actually kind of felt that they were part of their family, that mm -hmm. they would come out to see specifically, uh, et cetera. You know, you've got Coco down here. He was the famous smiling chimp, you know, like he was always smiling and what have you. Uh, we have uh, the lions, Matumba and Simba, which are over on the other wall, okay. what have you. They came here, in essence, as rescue animals, if, in my opinion. Mm. Uh, he purchased them from a private owner okay. who had had their claws removed. I see. Which is something that you really don't want to do, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera. And so those two lions were rescued here. They lived here for 20 years. You know, They had lived out their life in, in relative comfort and ease, so to speak. But that's one of the background things that the zoo does, is engaging in rescue animals. Some of the compuchins that we have here were taken out of that. The chimps themselves came out of laboratory situations and they came here to live, uh, et cetera. And so last year we took in a couple of deer, we have sheep, mm -hmm. we have other animals here that we have taken in. So we're talking about Charlie's dream and how it's turned into this. You know, I don't know, I didn't have the average conversation with Charlie about this portion of a dream, but I know you folks have realized this portion of the dream, which Absolutely. is the rescue of animals and the mission of talking the future possibility of saving animals. Very yep. big at Rolling Hill Zoo. Well, that was always big with Charlie because okay. the original name for this facility was Wildlife Refuge. You know, okay. So he saw it as a uh, yes, place yes. where wildlife could be saved and what have you. And staff actively, actively engaged in those behaviors, uh, et cetera. And it's always been in the background. It's something that the public don't typically know a lot about. Uh, but is one that we have started getting that message ah, out good. because it does resonate. With good folks. message. 
So we're at the panel, it talks about your grand opening, soft opening, mm -hmm. 1999, Bob? Yeah, is anybody gonna come? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's like there was concern. Will sure. anybody know about this and what have you? The opening though was very, very successful uh, and it's gone nowhere but up since then. Uh, and then shortly after that, after the opening, Charlie realized, you know, we're just not going to be able to have every animal that I would like to have, sure. quote, <laughs> so sure. to speak. We're not gonna be able to have everything. So we need to you know, build in some little exhibits where we've got a few animals stuck, uh, stuck around that, that people can see. And so he flew out to California and he interviewed with this guy that had a museum, and had to close it. And through some wheeling and dealing, he arranged to have the entire museum donated here. So the you know, museum. I think sometimes word pictures are the best, and that is a right out of the Babe park. Ruth out of the park. Something like thirty-four semis came here. We like have this, that picture. Like this. Like that. Bringing the animals here. Full and size. Full Cape size. Buffalo, already posed. Ready to be put on display. One of the best exhibits for me in the museum. I would that totally lion agree. and Cape Buffalo exhibit yes. is stunning. 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 Absolutely. We actually have little kids come in here and they're afraid to enter because they want to know, <laughs> are they alive? Yeah, are I they alive? Too. No, they're not. These are all animals who were taken uh, a long time ago, uh, right. what have you. They had been on display and rather than seeing them destroyed, which right. is what would have had to happen, mm -hmm. they were brought here and put on display here. We have all the permits, rec uh, requisite permits in order to, sure. to have the animals here and that kind of thing. So it actually augments the zoo wonderfully, particularly in January, February, sure, and part of March, really when it's really, really, really cold. In front of your education panel, Bob, Yep. a lot of education goes on at Rolling Hills Zoo. We do, we do about 13, 15,000 school kids a year. Wow. In formal programs. Fantastic, mm -hmm. fantastic. So what are some of the favorite things that you're imparting knowledge and wisdom about here? My favorite? Yeah. Animal welfare. Okay. They, you know, they need to be taken care of. We need to be responsible stewards of this earth. And we need to care about nature and we need to conserve it and preserve it for our future generations, yeah. that kind of thing. Great message. So we're working on the young to get that okay. message in there. A lot of conservation messages go out in that. But also, every generation is new as they come along. They all have to learn the basics. They have to know the basic biology. They have to know what animals need. They have to know what they eat, how much water yeah. to give them, and all this stuff like that. So they learn those basics as well. Boy, we're Besides never, having fun. We're never gonna make it at 25 minutes because you just hit on one of my favorite ideas that you presented as a fact that is a fact. You'll have to come back. Okay, start, <laughs> as we start at the basics and work up in education, you know, mm -hmm. everything's instantly available on a smartphone. The answers are but oftentimes people skip the basic understanding of the fact, and so well, you really don't have an understanding. The understanding comes from experiencing. Right. Okay, Very and there cool. is nothing like, and Bob Brown has a quote about this, there's nothing like animals to attract people to get them to learn. And so okay. my favorite phrase is, you gotta move the heart. I like that. Before you can move the brain. I like that, Bob. Before you can get the hand to do something. and so. We work on moving the heart with people here, getting them engaged, getting them, and giving them a sense of wonderment, which is a Victorian term, and like mm -hmm. thinking about nature, so to speak. So an important part of this exhibit is a kid's area okay. where they can do those experiences. Are you moving me? Uh, we'll move there. Oh, and okay. Then over there. Then to the kids. Well, you have a great shot on the wall behind me That's of right. a lady holding cubs. That'll move your heart. There you go. Okay. Yep. So the dream continues, Bob. Mm -hmm. Grand opening, you have some pitchers, dignitaries, the governor was here, oh, Billy yeah. Mills, Olympian was here. Yep, I did not right. know that. That's right. Charlie and a whole bunch of people were here as well, yeah. so to speak. They cut the ribbon, they opened the doors, and we're off and running. Off and running, and what a great dream it has been for not just the Walker family and you and your staff, but right. for the entire region, what a dream. But it never stopped. Okay. Okay, it never yep. stopped because once you open a place up, then it's like, well, what do we do besides run it? Okay, sure. But we've never stopped. So another part of the exhibit is basically, you know, it, it, the dream is continuing. We brought in uh, temporary exhibits that tell things that we didn't know: bats, spiders, 
penguins, all those <laughs> things like that that we do, basically didn't have. And then we have dreams for the future. Okay. I could, I could, I could tell you, okay. I could tell you, you about them. I, got, I, I could tell you me. about I'm them, but then I'd I know have, how that ends, Bob. I'd have to kill you and hide the body. So <laughs> no. And I know where you could hide it out <laughs> here. I wouldn't be here long. We're standing next to the future of Rolling Hill Zoo. I'm told, Bob, right nope. here. We're getting very close to the it. The dream is continuing. Charlie's flying over the great shot of Charlie flying over. Oh yeah, that's that's really cool. The future is bright at Rolling Hills. Well, we brought in a whole series of temporary exhibits, like I mentioned before, and the key here is is to recognize that Rolling Hill Zoo is an accredited member of the Association Association of Zoos and Aquariums, okay. which is the world's premier body for accrediting zoos and aquariums around the world. It's the gold standard, if you will, for animal care and, and operations. And we have been an accredited member since opening. All 20 years we wow. have been there. We're coming up for another round soon, and we know that we'll be able to continue that. What we have done without expanding the zoo greatly beyond the resources that we have to operate it mm -hmm. is bring in a variety of temporary exhibits involving live animals, those things that we can't normally show, as right. well as doing other uh, exhibits uh, as well. And right now we're in the process of planning our future, okay? And that is making sure that what we have is in good shape, mm -hmm. making sure that we keep it repaired, and then adding what we can within our resources that we have to, build, uh, to grow and build, so to speak. What, will, what that will be, I don't exactly know yet because we're gonna be in the process of discovering I know. that. I know. You do. Yes, it's going to be great. No. That I know. It's going to be great and it's gonna fit within the vision that Charlie Walker left us. Am I right, Bob? Absolutely, I because knew it. where we are now, we've actually come full circle in this exhibit. We're back to the philosophy that started it. Okay. You know, That's super. We're going to do it right. You know, good steward. Charlie was a good steward of all mm -hmm. his businesses. He's a good. He was a good steward here. You've kept that portion of his dream. Taking care of Rolling Hill Zoo, mm -hmm. of what you have, is every day. That's right. But I that, and the members of the board absolutely committed to. That. And then working within your resources is That's what you right. said. Finding right. a way to continue to grow because growth means continued life. That is correct. That look at correct. the trees, look at the baby animals, look at everything else in nature. It grows, thus mm -hmm. it lives. And right now we're in spring, where Great. growth is taking place. Well, today's a little cold and rainy. I had the best lilac bloom ever at my house, Bob. Oh, very mm -hmm. good. Very Dave good. didn't like them, but I love them. No. Well, I got red cardinals out in front of mine. So mine <laughs> as well, red cardinals <laughs> and purple flowers is a pretty sight. Go. So Bob, you know, I love coming here. Mm -hmm. um, I love talking to you about Rolling Hill Zoo. A couple of reasons why, why, who wouldn't love being here? But as I've always talked to you on camera, the passion you have for the animals, mm -hmm. for the vision of promoting all the things that we just talked about around this circle is very clear. It comes through very clear when you speak to me. Leadership is so much. Charlie was such a great leader, but the vision of care for the animals, for the promoting of the welfare, to make this a world-class institution mm -hmm. here on the prairie where Charlie put it. You and your staff, well done, Bob. The key here is the staff because I can't do that myself. I can live it, I can dream it, I can try, but it's everybody else that's involved with the zoo that really makes it happen. It is a group effort, it's a team effort. And that's really what happened. Do you remember when we were here last at the orangutan exhibit and, and we set the camera up and, and your, the handlers coaxed them over with some food? Mm -hmm. I saw the same passion and care in their face as they right. interacted with their charges there through the wire. Um, it was very evident they're not here just for a job. They're here with a mission and a vision as well. Yeah. Once this profession gets in your blood, it's there. Look out, because <laughs> you won't be able to leave. Well, I'm kind of the horse guy. I know how that works, <laughs> yeah. Bob. So what else are you going to tell us about the future? Dave's going to give me the signal for time here any minute, I'm pretty certain. Well, the future will involve expanded exhibits. Okay. It's going to involve, and the creation in all likelihood, because we're talking about it right now, of a breeding facility. Oh, wow. Because oh. what has to happen 
is that the animals that we have in our care, even though we treat the entire captive population, mm -hmm. and we move animals around for breeding purposes, things are happening in the wild. There's two sure. areas where giraffes are no longer found. Right. So we have to continue breeding giraffes. Lions are disappearing in Africa, mm -hmm. and so we need to focus on that. The Amur leopard that we have on display here, that we're talking to the species program that we work with uh, about a, a mate for him, basically that's the most endangered big cat in the world right now. Right. So we have got some of the rarest animals here that we have to provide for, the, for their future, their future of the species. And so we have that responsibility and we're in the process of making those plans. You know, we have a, a, a new young veterinarian in Abilene, Kansas at the Abilene Veterinary Hospital mm -hmm. whose uh, specialty is in reproduction mm. of large animals. You know, she works in the large animal division. But I'm just reading the bio the other day just out of interest. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm listening to you and I'm always about community, mm -hmm. community. It, it takes a wealth of resources, not just money, to make things go. Knowledge is what makes things go as One well. One of our relief vets comes from uh, Abilene. We use Super. Uh, uh, we use a specialist vet out of Wichita to do mm -hmm. all our dental work that comes in for that. We have flown in experts with the chimps and the orangs mm -hmm. to deal with issues with them. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting uh, profession because we're not alone. We have 230 some other facilities to draw on as well as K-State, KU if we have to. It's a, it's a great place to be, even though you wouldn't expect to find a zoo here in Salina, Kansas. In the middle it's of the prairie. It's a great place. It's right in the middle of everything. We can draw in whatever we want. Right where Charlie Walker wanted it. Mm -hmm. Bob right. Jenkins. My pleasure. Thanks for promoting the vision of Rolling Hill Zoo and Charlie Walker. Job well done. Folks, if you've never been here, come. If you've been here 50 times, you don't want to miss number 51. There you it's go. It's going to be fantastic. The future's bright. Rolling Hill Zoo in the prairie just to the west of Salina, Kansas. I'm Dennis Weiss, I work for Eagle Communications. Thanks for sharing our town today. <laughs>